country of majestic contrast, from cities and mountains. Welcome to Capsua, the blue city. We are in the valley. Salam. Salam. To deserts. We could be riding our camels into the desert. I can't believe it. Africa! I'll be spending 14 days visiting Morocco's quintessential locations. Volobilis, the city of Volobilis. This is the main square of Marrakesh. Oh, my God. It's the place where they film Gladiator. I've never taken on a trip of this magnitude, and I'll be doing it all through intrepid travels. This is beyond what I expected. This is amazing. I've never traveled with a bunch of strangers before. I have no idea what it's going to be like. This will be an entirely new country, continent, and culture for me different from any travel I've ever done. According to the lady, how come you use the tattoos? And she said, for fashion. Definitely one of the best highlights of this trip so far. And I'll be documenting my entire experience, showing you Morocco Uncovered with Intrepid Travels. <laughs> New York City to Casablanca will take six and a half hours. Needed. Medina in Arabic is Old City. Mohammed, thank okay. you so much. Bye-bye. All right, so we have made it to Casablanca safely, where I'll be here for the next two days. I actually arrived a day early because tomorrow I'll be meeting the group that I'm going to be traveling with for the next two weeks. The reason for that being is that I booked this trip through a company called Intrepid, which I came across during my research, funny enough, on Instagram. Gee, I wonder how Instagram knows where I want to be traveling to. Anyway, the reason for booking with them is for a couple of reasons. One, when I was doing my research, they pretty much had a package that hit every location that I want to go to. And they also cover all the accommodations, transportations, activities, and most meals. So that pretty much gets rid of the stress of having to plan a trip and focuses more on just actually enjoying it. The other reason is to switch up my traveling a little bit. I've never traveled with a bunch of strangers before. I have no idea what it's going to be like. I don't know how they're going to feel about me vlogging or sticking a camera in their face and filming everything but you know it's you know we're trying something different this is definitely one of the places that i've been wanting to go to for a long time but just from the pictures that i've seen alone i know that it's going to be so visually stunning i'm going to love it anyway it's 9 a.m and uh there really is no plan for the day other than to get settled in and maybe walk around the city and get familiarized grab a bite to eat and rest up because tomorrow is the beginning of this really big adventure and I can't wait. First day in Casablanca, pretty cool, walking around the city. It is 8.30 right now, uh, the sun's going down, so it's time for me to head back to my hotel. I will say this, I am finding it very difficult to get the shots that I want because a lot of the locals and the uh, merchants do not like you taking pictures or videos of them or of their products, and a lot of them will come up to you and say, stop filming. So that's gonna be pretty challenging in the future of this, this trip, but it is what it is, what can you do? I think you have to ask permission, but a lot of them will say no. I guess unless you buy something. Anyway, time to head back. Good night. What are we going to expect for the next day? What are we going to see? And But I'm sure you're going to love it. We met our guide, Mohammed, and over dinner, I had my first taste of Chajin as we all began getting acquainted. In the morning, we set off for our first stop. 10 minutes, drive to the mosque, okay? Yeah, yeah. All the buildings here is administration for the mosque and also for another, like a museum. First stop is the Mosque Hassan II, which is the largest mosque in Casablanca. The Hassan Mosque II is the largest mosque in Africa and third largest in the world. Its minaret points towards Mecca, where hundreds of thousands of worshippers come to pray. It's also only one of two mosques open to non-Muslim followers. That was amazing. I think I lost the group. I just found them over there. And I think now we're going to take a 
A couple hours drive to Rabat. That's our next town on the agenda. We began our adventure with a one and a half hour drive to the capital city of Rabat. Our first stop was the mausoleum of Muhammad V, which contained the tomb of the former Moroccan king. Opposite of the Hassan Tower, once intended to be the largest mosque in the world, now only left by a few walls and columns. This is unfinished mosque, uh, unfinished mosque. And the old columns, we have 365 columns. Minis, one year, one columns, one day. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Our guide took us through Rabat's Medina. Medina typically means the old city or town. To America. And from here swim. to America <laughs> is just two minutes. This is kind of like a prelude to uh, Chechawan. You've been to Chechawan? Very beautiful. More beautiful yeah, than this? Yeah, very beautiful. It was my first taste of Moroccan pastry and its traditional tea, a green tea prepared with spearmint leaves and sugar. It's good, but it tastes like you're drinking toothpaste. We were off again with a two-hour drive to Meknes. It is 6.30 right now, and we have an hour and a half to get ready because our tour guide, Mohammed, has something special planned for us. We're going to be having dinner with a local family, so look forward to that. Unfortunately, it's a lack of a communication, we did speak English, but uh, I will translate. Oh, yeah. So please, welcome to the first house where we're going to see how it look like the houses for the Moroccan families. Please. With my style, this is the style of Intrepid actually in the past. So I'm going to explain to you about the Moroccan soup. Moroccan soup is kind of a flour with tomato sauce cooked including also chickpeas, lentils, pasta, parsley, coriander and yeah. spices. Okay, this is how it looks like. It's very delicious. <laughs> Ali and his family treated us to Moroccan soup, tagine and couscous. It was enough to feed us twice over. Oh my God. Sticky dates, pudding. <laughs> it's sticky date pudding. Oh, yes. it's it's goodness gracious. Oh, yes. This is the okay. whitest I got. So. <laughs> See, that works too. Four. Two daughters, we see, and two boys. Two, three. Okay, everyone. Bin Saha. Bin Saha. Bin Saha means. It's hot. It's hot. It's hot. It's hot. Can't hold that. I'm sorry. So. Um, we say bisaha means um, like same as the French when you say santé. Santé means bisaha as well means be in good health. Bisaha. Good morning guys. Alright, it is 8 a.m. right now. I just finished having a Moroccan pancake breakfast upstairs on the roof with a view. Today is probably going to be the most anticipated location for me on this trip because we're going to be leaving Minsk and taking a three to four hour drive to Chefchaouen. That's going to be the blue city and I'm really looking forward to that because I think that's going to be the best Instagram pictures ever. Alright, well, sun's coming out. It's a little bit chilly now but it's going to be a hot one today. Anyway, let's get the day started. We say goodbye to Meknes for a three and a half hour drive to Chef Chawan, but first stopping at an archaeological site just outside of Meknes known as Volobulus. 380 years of Roman Empire it was huge. Imagine so from Hadrian's Wall down to Volubilis to Mesopotamia. So they didn't control all these territories. People they didn't like to pay taxes. Roman soldier, no money to, to collect. So the Berber pushed him off. Well, the Berber they didn't have this technology, so when they pushed them away, they destroyed. The city disappeared, disappeared. 
700, the Arabs conquered North Africa, so to spread Islam, and they used the city as a stone quarry to build other places around here. It's a long time Volubilis used as a, uh, as a stone quarry. Now many marble pillars and stone has been taken away to build the Knesset. It's more than 70 or 80 percent of materials gone. Lisbon earthquake of 1755, so pretty much finished Volubilis off. We are in the poor section, the down, we are in the downtown. Roman, they had clay tiles and the pitch roof, so they used to collect the rainwater, like in Plovium. Imagine this basin and also this mosaics would be would covered by water. The water into the base of the pillars. So fish swim here. Between the pillars and between the arches, it's not so original. Just when they couldn't find a piece of stones, they add the bricks for replacing the real stones. Moni Sipo. Volubilis, the city of Volubilis. It has been restored. Uh, fortunately, no stones missing, all original, by the help of the sketches by, made by the British ambassador, so they could put the stones back. Women, they were slippers to shoes, they were symbolic. Have a good one, Shukran. Shukran. Took a break from the three hours of driving to check this panoramic view of Chef Shawan. So tonight, I will take you, or this afternoon actually, I will take you to show you the way, how you can get there. This one, its name, Babalain. Babalain means the eye gates. It will take us always the other way, like the bus, a bit steep, to get to the main square. Guys, this is the place where we're going upstairs. The street is alive tonight. I am full. Uh, it's time to go to bed because tomorrow we have a big day. We're going to wake up at 7 a.m. to go walking through this entire Medina. I can't wait to explore Chef Chowin. Oh, are we handsome? Yes, yes. Why not? We're like the Backstreet Boys. <laughs> So we're on top of the terrace of the hotel and they have the call to prayer happening on opposite sides of the hotel. Good morning everyone. It is 6.30 in the morning. I got up early, a little extra early to get up on this terrace and see Chef Chowan in the morning and it does not disappoint. I mean, when I think of Morocco, this is exactly what I imagined. This is beyond what I expected. This is amazing. Still got the morning dew rising. I think so far, Chef Chowan has been my favorite city so far that we've visited. Anyway, let's go ahead downstairs and meet the rest of the group because we're gonna be doing our 7 a.m. hike and checking out the rest of the blue city. Caught me talking to myself on camera. <laughs> I noticed. Can we get a new hiker with us? Going the national park, yeah. and we're going all the way up straight to there. Fall behind again. Let's catch up to the group.
lagging behind again, as always. I know. Let's go. I'll catch up. I'm catching up. Let's go. That was a great little morning hike. Absolutely stunning view. Chef Chowan, you have been a And now, the special presentation. Welcome to Shashua, the blue city, one of the beautiful city in Morocco. Good. Like everywhere you go, you want to take a picture. I need a full day here. Oh, oh my god. Oh. Oh. Thank you. That's some cool uh, local kids. I think I just gained some new followers. We still have another three hours of driving to do to reach Fest, but we pulled over on the side of the road over here to check out this view. We made it to Fez in time for dinner, when Muhammad led us through a series of narrow alleys to a 14th century restaurant in the most unlikely of places. Hello. Oh my god! Can you believe this? No! This is amazing! Oh, wow! So welcome to one of the palaces in Fez. That's how it looks like most of the houses in the Medina of Fez. Okay, look at this. All the mosaics and everything you see here is done by hand, piece by piece. The king, Mohammed VI, and his wife behind him. Serve yourself, pass it to the one next to you. This goes like that. Shukra. Thank you. We are now making our way to the tanneries, which is very famous in Fez. Tanneries are where they make all the leather goods. And what makes it famous, a couple of things. Number one is the highest quality of leather goods. Number two, they use pigeon poo. Yes, pigeon poo is part of the ingredients, which creates such an intense smell that they actually hand you mints to put over your face if the smell gets too intense. So here they give us the mints just to reduce the smell exactly. Fashion statement. Pigeon dropping. Pigeon dropping has ammoniac natural to make leather soft and save time to open the pores of leather and the lime stone to kick the wool and the fur out the skin. The wool what we get from a lime we call it dead wool. It's not good for weaving. Let's just stop the cushion no matter. How are you handling the smell something? Uh pretty much it smells like a dairy. Yeah. A neighbor's farm. <laughs> yeah. What about you? You meant helping? <laughs> yep. <laughs> Bye. Bye. We stopped at a garment shop to learn about the materials and techniques they use. I show you the fiber from this plant, like aloe vera. Here you are. And how to wrap a desert scarf. Make the first knot, plus we open the whole scarf with behind your hand. Twist <laughs> it. We put your finger, then turn around your head, open the post knot, and we say Fatima, Salama, or oh, bye bye. Hello. Bye bye, sir. Hello. Hello. Yeah. How do I look? You are cool. You also look so cool. <laughs> so we are now in the valley, still a few more hours to our destination. This time we're stopping off to go visit a nomad family. Here in Morocco, most of our nomads, they 
are seasoned nomads, six months in the flattened area, six months in the top. This is the happening. This is how it looks like. Okay, it's only mud. Baby goats. The old generation, they use the tattoos. According to the lady, okay, here, every time we stop here, I ask her once, how come you use the tattoos? And she said, for fashion. The famous yeast used in our bread. Avans is like this, as you see. Her name is Insaf, and this one is with Wisal. Show 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 we were back on the road for three hours on our way to Medelt. This is luxury. Wow. This is by far the best hotel I've had on this entire trip. Ah, oh, oh God. We are in the valley to do our little hike and and uh, yeah, I brought my desert scarf with me. Thought it was an appropriate time to bring the desert scarf. This piece of the gym. This is Sedam. 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 Yalla, here we Bricks houses yes. it's over there. Yes. All right. Most of the people who used to live there or still live in there are nomad families who came to live here. Once they're done with nomadic, they come to live in this area. So downstairs is for animals and upstairs is for it's very poor families. Uh -oh. That was lightning. Let's get out of here. Come in, come in. <laughs> mm. Which way we go? This way? This way, this way. This way. So it's only mother and the children. So now the father is always away. Because as you know, the working in the farm is only season when the time for apples. So when the apples finish, you have to look for another job. This stuff, I'm always asking her not to. Okay. <laughs> All right. I gotta say, this trip is really starting to take shape and it's just getting better and better. I'm so glad we got to do that. All right, so tomorrow, we're leaving at nine o'clock. We'll have about five hours drive plus stops. And we started, as you see, here we are. Medals is in Medal region, and we're driving this way, okay, to southeast of Morocco, exactly to Mezuga or Erkshabi, as they call it, the sand dunes. Every day, couscous, every day, couscous, every night, tajin, every night, tajin, a jambo habare, a jambo habare, 
Akura Matata. Akura Matata. Well done, guys. Very good. We made it to the desert. This is my tent for tonight. Luxurious. Check it out. Quick little swim to cool off, and now we're gonna get ready because we're gonna be riding our camels into the desert. I can't believe it. I mean, all my life I've been wanting to come to Morocco, to the desert, and ride a camel, and now I get to do that. It just feels surreal. Whoa. How are you, Paulina? <laughs> <laughs> Feeling good? Yep. Yeah. yeah. Okay, now we're gonna Alright. Can you tell me oh. you're gonna oh. Woo. Africa! Oh, that really hurts the uh I'm tilted to the right, I'm about to fall. <laughs> raining in the desert. It kind of helps keep it cool. Toby's camels holding up traffic. Yalla camel, yalla. Hey. Getting fancy with the shots. Oh, it's really starting to hurt. I gotta make some adjustment. Loosen up the hips. You guys look pretty cool. Wow, are you getting that? Yeah. Yeah, buddy. Oh, okay. <laughs> After our camel ride, a few of us decided to venture up the sand dune for a breathtaking view. We started down there, and then we make our way up to the top. To the top. <laughs> Sand is really picking up. You're almost. Almost to the top. Almost to the top. Okay. Bravo! Uh. Welcome, Tony. Returned to camp, we were treated to live Moroccan music. up at 5.30 in the morning, grabbed our camels and we headed back out into the desert. It was so peaceful. It was like the most peaceful thing I've ever felt. Just quietness.
definitely one of the best highlights of this trip so far. <laughs> that morning we left the Sahara and checked out Tojira Gorge on our way to Emgun. sound pleasant at all. I think it's pretty cool that people come here with their families or friends to set up tents and lay out and go for a swim. We were then taken to lunch at a nearby restaurant to have our first taste of Berber pizza. Salam. So after six hours of driving, we finally made it to our destination here in the Atlas Mountains. That's where we're staying at. And this is our view. What a view. I broke it. Donuts, big zero. Oh my God. I love donuts. Yeah. It's a good morning for a hike. So we're going to be walking an hour and a half through these mountains to get a panoramic view of Emgun. It kind of looks like Arizona right now. Atlantic Ocean, Mediterranean, green, okay, the forest, forest. and deserts. Forest. And they and have the, the symbol with the red color, with the blood of Amazigh people. The symbol is a symbol of a free man. Berber alphabet, it's named Tifina, and the name uh, means Zed. And it means be Amazigh or Mazza. It's be Amazigh. This is like holding as a free man. All right, last day in the Mgoon Mountains. We're about to have breakfast. By the way, they make the best homemade donuts ever. Uh, I don't know, I can't believe that in a few days this trip's gonna be done. I've been having such a good time. I feel like we just started getting going and soon it's gonna be over. All right. Adios. 
It would be a long five hour drive from Engun to Ait Benadal. Okay, so we are in Ait Benadal. I think I'm saying that wrong. And uh, I don't know how much of this you'll be able to see with my iPhone because the hotel and the town, the entire town, has lost electricity. But this is my room. Pretty Moroccan cool. The Kassar of Ait Benedal is a UNESCO World Heritage Site. Its distinct pre-Saharan appearance has also made it a great location for many popular films. It becomes very famous exactly in the 14th and 15th century by the caravan Sirais. Okay, the caravan Sirais were coming from south or sub-Sahara and they take their way crossing the, I mean, the high Atlas mountain to the big cities, especially to Marrakesh or to Isawera. Two or three families still living there. Most of the families, they move and they build the new houses in this way. That's where we go, going, Yalla. As you see, most of the houses is fall down. Corner, they have kind of watchtower to protect the granary. The square here is belongs to our family. It's the place where they film one of the famous movies in the world is Gladiator. It's the place where they built the arena. As the first fight for Russell Crowe, okay, when they bring him as a slave. It was it's done here. Are you not entertained? The arena they filmed Gladiator. That's pretty freaking cool. You have paper touch in the Okay. Okay. So, <laughs> so we need to place. reenact one of these. Yeah, let's do it. It's the place we're going to show you. Game of the Throne. Wind Dinner comes. Racing. Yeah, comes out and is walking like that and all touching all the people, her people touching her hands. Okay, Misa's going down. <laughs> Good morning. It is 6:30 right now. Today we have a really long drive from Ait Benadou to Marrakesh. What it's really sad is that that's where we're going to spend the last few days of this trip, and then it's all over and I've really been enjoying myself here. Morocco is just so different from anything I've ever seen and every city and every place I've been going to has been getting better and better and now that I feel like I've just gotten a groove it's all over. Okay so this is what I've been waiting for. This is Jamal Fna. This is the main square of Marrakesh. Here's where you're gonna find all the badness, the monkeys, the shopping, and the snake charmers. Nothing like it here. No, no, it no, gives no. you luck. When I was pinching it, it I thought, if he's I going thought, backward, I the yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like <laughs> it me out. With the With a day left in Marrakesh, there's just one last thing left on the agenda. Okay, so it is 4:45 in the morning. I'm getting up this early because there's just one more thing I need to do to end this trip epically. Are you ready for it? I'm gonna show you. One, two, three. Boom, there we go. We're gonna be flying up on that thing and checking out Morocco and Marrakesh from above. Woo, can't wait.
Now that you're on board, you must stay on board. Okay, yes. very important. <laughs> that includes takeoff, the flight, and mostly landing. Once we have landed, please do not get out of the basket until I've told you so. If you divide a seat in two, if you look at the left part, you'll see a green stain, and in the middle of the green stain, you'll see the minaret. So it's the highest point of Marrakesh, around 70 meters. If we touch it, it's normal, don't worry. <laughs> Allez, position, landing position, please. <laughs> it, was it was a medium landing. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you very much. That was epic. All right, we just completed our hot air balloon, and I just met two people from New York. Adriana and Daisy. Hi! Yeah. Fun experience? Yes. yes. It was a lot of fun. It was really fun. Certificate of bravery. Some serious New York traffic here. There's always that one leg. Huh? Wait for me! Last meal! My We spent our last evening with a wonderful dinner and a final walk through the square. The next morning was a three hour train from Marrakesh back to Casablanca and an eight hour flight home to New York. If I had to sum up this trip in one cliche word, I'd say amazing. Location to location, I was blown away by how each part of Morocco had its own beautiful aesthetic. Morocco has so much history and culture to offer that huge segments of this trip didn't make the cut just to keep this video from not being three hours long. From itinerary to accommodations, Intrepid was spot on. I'll still be doing my solo trips, but I do see myself using them again in the future if transportation or activities were an issue or if you simply want to meet new people. If you're interested in this particular package, I'll link it below, but Intrepid offers plenty of other options to choose from. Mohammed was a fantastic guide, informative and entertaining. He really made the entire experience memorable. I couldn't have asked for a better group. Initially, this was my biggest concern, but I see the appeal of meeting random individuals and bonding over the experiences that you're sharing. Some of the best moments weren't even on camera and those are the memories I'll cherish most. What's next for me? In two weeks, I'll be celebrating my birthday in Bali with one of my best friends, Joe, and I will be documenting that as well. So, until next time, Salam and Yalla! Three to four hour drive, leaving Mensk who. Let's switch a little. Let me do that again. <laughs>